And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at an expansion to one of my favorite games from last year, Vindication. This is Vindication Leaders and Alliances. I was excited about this, although I have to say, I, was, I play Vindication a lot. Vindication comes with many modules inside it. And I was like, well, I don't know that the game needs an expansion. There's already different modules I can mess around with anyway. I don't play with all of them all the time. But hey, I'm always happy to get some new stuff. Let's take a look at what's inside this fairly small expansion for a pretty big game. So first we had some replacement stuff. So in the original set we have a uh, regular academy, or at least there was a misprint, there was not two points on the academy, so now you get one that there is. So, ow. Uh, the dice have been replaced too. Uh, so the resource die, first of all, the new die is nice and rounded, I guess. and. Other than that, they're pretty much the same. The symbols are slightly smaller, but it's rounded. But also it mentions it's times two or times one, which is just an easy way to remember how many of that resource you get. And then the attack die is essentially the same, again, more rounded, except instead of there being a blank side, now there's this orange die, which is like, woohoo, or miss, or I don't know what it means, but it is cool. Um, and it's easy to tell the difference between that and the exhausted side. So th these are nice, and they're new additions. The game also comes with, for each of the colors comes to two character tokens now and this is the the scum and this is the vindicated version and that's to replace the the tokens that you already have which was kind of like a boring token anyway this is good uh, I don't want to use the game comes with this nice insert to hold all this I don't want to use all that so I'm gonna have to try to figure out how to fit all this stuff in the base game but I do like using these it's just easier to see them on the board there's a few new tiles. Uh, this one is really interesting, the White Raven. Essentially, you can retire people that you have companions. You don't lose con con you know, honor for doing that. In fact, you get three honor for each one that retires. It's like a desperation thing, maybe, or close to the end of the game type thing. This is desperation. You get a whole extra turn, but you have to basically dilute three or take three of your tokens and put them down into potential. Ugh. That's kind of tough. I guess if you already have been vindicated, maybe it doesn't matter so much, but yeah, I don't know how often I'll use this one. The White Raven is one that I would use occasionally for sure. Also some new cards here, a few traits. I especially like Humility, where someone has more honor than you, you can augment a potential to an influence. There's TikTok, the gleaming. Uh, we have a few more companions, One Shot Dara, Beast Mistress Varroa, uh, Ella, Flicker of Days to Come. So these are kind of neat. And the game also comes with a whole setup to play as solo games. This comes with this booklet here, One Player Solo Adventures. You actually will use these new characters, especially this TikTok the Gleaming. It tells you how to use them, how to put these tokens, and there's a whole board that comes with this. I have not tested this out at all. I don't know how well this works, but if you want to play the game solo, this is, a, I guess, there's a lot of extra stuff for you. But this is the main content that is added to this expansion, the advisors. So there's six of these that are placed next to the board uh, at the beginning of the game. And I'm just going to show you a couple at a time. But you can see that there's uh, all these advisors here. And on the scoring track, you as a group decide where to put this token. And when your scoring token passes this, each player gets three of these. And you place that one on your own color. So if I'm purple, I'd place it on Voana, Fellowship of the Light. However, as a free action now on future turns, I can use yellow, red, or blue cubes to move up one on this track or any other track starting at the bottom on the other tracks. Or I can pay orange, green, or purple to move up two on these. Another thing you can do, once per turn, you can take one of these and move it down one or two on that track, which could cause it to come off the track, to take the special abilities of these. You think these are cool special abilities? Let me show you. So Voana lets you visit a spot 
and not require adjacency. That's pretty cool. Dismiss a companion from somebody else, but then they get an empowered draw. This one's not as powerful. I mean, it's cool you can get rid of someone's annoying companion that might be bothering you, but they're likely going to get a decent one to take its place, and they don't gain honor or lose honor or whatever. So it, if this is done to you, it's a little bit of a take that, but not too bad. Zawn here, you can put take two influence from companions in play. That's great. And if you move it off other people's companions, you get two conviction. I like this a lot. It helps you and helps other people. Or you can teleport to any unoccupied location on the map. That's awesome. Ooh. This guy here, gain an orange, purple, or green. Well, that's not bad. And remove all control and fortification from an adjacent map region. That's a little mean, but this one with nature, I would use a lot. Corner of the market, I can redistribute my yellow, blue, and red up to seven of them. This is really neat. So if I want blue, for example, and I'm focusing on red and I get a lot of red, I can quick switch it over to blue. Here you can draw three loot cards. That's one of the modules in the base game and keep one. You don't get honor, but you know, hey, if you want loot cards, and it makes sense with the pirate theme of this character. Augment a potential right to a conviction. Oh, I love this one. And add an influence to an adjacent region you, can, you do not control. You may co-control this region. This may be my favorite of all of them. However, the Silver Eye is also pretty cool. Draw two secret quests and keep one. Cost one rapport for each secret quest you have. Well, that's still, still a neat thing. Or place a black treachery block on a player's face-up card. Its text is nullified until the block is removed for one conviction. That's mean. Mean. But I like to draw in the secret quests. But I think this one is my favorite of all of them. But as you can see, all of these are really neat because you can essentially spend these cubes to move up on these tracks if you have extra cubes. And you can get points. So the way this works is, as you're moving your tokens up on these, once per game, you can make an alliance. So you can take up to two of these off these tracks, score the points underneath them, and then place them up here at the top. That's awesome. And I'll tell you why. Because if you wait till they get all the way to the top of the track on two of them, that could be 20 honor. Now, it could be even less than that. It could be five and three, you know, eight points, whatever. But that's still a lot. And that's a way basically to turn cubes into points. There's no question, like I said, this is a very nice insert, but I didn't want to keep an extra box for this stuff. So I was able to keep everything in the main box, but I had to take out the big insert here. Yeah, I'm not too sad to see this one go, frankly. Um, I have all the, the bands here. The harder part was the actual putting the things into this because in now when I put them inside here, I wanted to put the tokens and the extra characters. But if I place them just right, like a puzzle, everything fit inside. You know, until I played this, I didn't realize that these characters were tied with a specific faction. I thought it didn't matter. But as you can see, it fits in, and it's not about to pop off either. So it all fits in the base box. So there's that. But if you want, you can keep it in the expansion yourself. Now, if you're not clear on this, I love Vindication. I love it. It's one of my favorite games. I just have so much fun with it, moving around. I feel the story in this Euro game of moving around and collecting cubes and stuff. It's really neat. I really like this expansion. Kind of went into it thinking I don't need it. Now, granted, the new dice, some of the new stuff, the soul, the soul stuff doesn't really pertain to me. I like playing a game with other people. But, I mean, I'm glad that's in there. But the main content for me are these leaders. And they're really neat. They're very powerful. They certainly change up the game. They give you a wealth of, of, in, of interaction. So I've actually tested this with new people who never played before, and they were able to handle this, but there's a lot going on. Having these six leaders there, we each with two abilities that can be used, that's 12 abilities. So I, I kind of wish the game had come with a reference card that told you all those abilities. Otherwise, you're kind of having to pass the leaders around to look at. I feel like that was a miss here. The reference cards would have been pretty handy. But still, having these leaders, if you have extra cubes or something, you can funnel it right into these and then use one of these each round and teleportation, uh, extra, there's a little bit of attacking in these, ways to get extra points. It's, it adds some solid thing and the component quality is high. The rest of it's window dressing. 100% this is not an expansion I would say you need. I just wouldn't. The game's fine as is. However, I do like playing with the leaders a lot, and what I think is they offer another option to do things with. When I play Vindication, I like playing with the 
one of the, some of the modules that give you extra options, but I don't always play with them because I don't want to overwhelm people I'm playing with. I feel the same way with this. This is a, yet another option, but it's a solid option, and of, I like it better than any of the modules that are in Vindication so far. So while not necessary, for sure, it adds more cool op options to the game, and it, I think it adds a little bit more theming. And then I do like the extra dice and the new standees and stuff. That's cool. And if you're solo, even better. So that's what's inside this box, leaders and alliances. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.